we finally got to the last talk of the day uh, where Anakul is going to tell us about the uh, image load time and impact of uh, network on uh, perceived performance and user experience. Um, since network becomes an essential part of um, pretty much any experience that we have on mobile or web. So looking forward to the talk. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Understanding Image Load Time in the Facebook for Android app. Let's start with some context. We found through some user research that images that take longer than a second to load are really annoying to people. So this is part of an effort to reduce these long gray boxes. When we started this effort, we didn't really have a good idea of what needed to be done, but we did suspect that congestion would be a part of it. The app Action prefetches a, a lot, lot and without the too much prefetches a lot the intuition without... that we would need to look at traces to figure out opportunities for optimizing the order in which we are prefetching images. And uh, as an example, this on the right is the list of images that we fetch in a typical startup. So there's plenty of opportunity to get something wrong here. We already had visualizations for the network and view layers, but it was not e easy to see which slow image is waiting for which network request and when the image downloaded by a particular request ultimately comes on screen. So we just used the URI to join these two layers and ended up with the visualizations on the right. We are joining data for each image from three layers in the app. The first is the view layer. Each red line is a gray box. Long red lines are slow images that we want to fix. Um, second is the image infra layer. Each yellow line is an attempt to fetch an image either from disk or memory cache or network. And finally, the segmented blue lines are coming from the network layer. So each of these lines is an attempt to fetch the image from the CDN. The network request is further broken down into three colors, as you can see here. Um, the gray represents the time when the image was in a client-side queue. And we'll come back to the reasons for having a client-side queue later. The light blue represents the time it took to send the image, uh, I'm sorry, to send the request and get the first byte back from the CDN. This has a lower bound of the RTT uh, between the client and the CDN, but in practice, it can be a lot worse if our data is stuck behind other requests. And then finally, the dark blue represents the time between the first byte and the last byte. This is roughly the transmission time um, for, for the data in that particular request. Um, very approximately, the intuition is that the light blue part depends on the RTT or the distance to the CDN, while the dark blue depends on the size of the response and the bandwidth. So like the size of the pipe and the amount of data that you're trying to send through it. Okay. Um, when, once we started doing this, it immediately jumped out at, at us that we were not actually prefetching enough. Uh, prefetching images gives us a lot of slack and leads to a really good user experience. So for example, in this particular case, uh, this request took several seconds, but as far as the user was concerned, it was instantaneous because uh, we were able to prefetch it several several seconds before it actually came on screen. We also noticed that there's a lot of variation in how effective prefetching actually is. Sometimes prefetches happen immediately before the image comes on screen, so they don't make a lot of difference, which is what you see here. All of these images have technically been prefetched, but it's just so close to when they actually come on screen that it's not making a difference. This indicated to us that we should aim for having several seconds of prefetch, which was initially quite unintuitive. We have investigated this issue a little more and found several reasons, some of which are listed here, why images don't get prefetched. The most obvious and least actionable case is when we're navigating to a new surface. So if you 
if you tap on a profile picture or something, uh, we're not going to prefetch the destination screen or the destination media for that. But as it turns out, only about half are this kind of uh, missed prefetching. Um, there's various reasons uh, for not prefetching images otherwise, uh, but what they have in common is that they are all fixable in principle. So this, this we found some early opportunity here by going sort of in the opposite direction. Now we wanted to explore the reasons for these slow requests a little bit more. Like this network request takes like eight seconds. Are we really sure it's not because we're just prefetching a whole bunch of irrelevant things at the same time. So we saw in a lot of cases that network requests were slow despite not competing with anything, um, which is a good indication that, it, that it's not congestion. To generalize this, we looked at the actual bandwidth we were receiving in some instant, which is shown here, these bytes received. Um, and in con alongside this, looking at the amount of data that we're waiting for in that instant. So in putting these two together, we can clearly see network gaps like this one, cases where we are expecting some data, but the network is silent. Um, if there are slow image loads in this span, then it's not a congestion issue. As we started looking at this, we realized in fact that the network is quite bursty, and this is why prefetching works so well. It's not that uncommon to find gaps of 2, 10, or even 20 seconds, like you can see over here. We have some hypotheses for why this happens, uh, but largely they are not very actionable, or at least harder to do than prefetching. Uh, like weak cell tower signal or high load at the cell tower or handoffs between towers when you're on a highway. We are planning to investigate more deeply in the coming months, uh, but currently we are just accepting this. We have, this has convinced us that prefetching is not optional. We should aim to prefetch images by 10 or even 20 seconds to give users a smooth experience. This brings us to congestion because if we must prefetch, then we will inevitably have congestion, and the idea then is to minimize it. Uh, congestion is quite hard to define precisely, but intuitively it means something like fetching the wrong thing at the wrong time. Um, and it's something that shows up quite clearly in this visualization. For, so for example, here we can see an obvious example of bad prefetching. The network wasn't able to fetch anything for almost a whole minute, from about 40 seconds to about a minute and 40 seconds. <clears throat> While we were prefetching all of these images that never came on screen, as you can see by the lack of any red line or red dot, so they just never came on screen. Um, and this case is closer to the ideal behavior where we keep prefetches in queue um, as represented by the gray lines and put them uh, on the network one by one. And this is the reason why we have a client-side queue. Um, the fewer requests you have on the network at any given time, uh, the more responsive it is when the user does something unexpected that you have not prefetched. OK, um, so let's use all of this information to analyze a trace. <clears throat> This, uh, this is a trace, and you can see that there's a lot of red lines here, which is a lot of slow, unpleasant images. Um, and so like going through these, the first thing that we can see here is that this is fairly low bandwidth. This is about 20 to 50 kbps and quite bursty. So we have quite a lot of potential for uh, improving performance by, uh, by changing the order of images. Uh, changing the order of fetching. In, in, in a high bandwidth or low RTT connection, it is hard to get um, significant wins. It doesn't really matter what order you fetch in if, if you have a great network. It just any amount of prefetching will do it. Um, 
somewhat tangential, uh, this one, these three images and these three images are actually the same image. Um, so the user initially skipped over these and then scrolled back up to see them and waited for them to appear on screen. This is a great indication that the work we're doing is impactful and that users really care about it. Okay, so <clears throat> looking, starting to look at opportunities, uh, we can see over here that these images we attempted a prefetch, but it failed for some reason. Uh, you can see by the yellow dot that our image infra layer knew that this image was going to come on screen, but something went wrong and we never went to the network. Okay, that's this set of images. This set of images, these two, we didn't even get that far. So again, we just missed prefetching. Uh, it's a different issue than the prior one, but leading to the same outcome, no prefetching. Finally, fifth over here, we had a prefetch about eight seconds in advance of it coming on screen, but the network request was quite slow. And this is something that we look at through the lens of congestion to see if we could uh, reorder something in order to make this request faster. Okay, so let's look at congestion. The way we're gonna do it is we look at all the overlapping requests with this one and make a judgment for each of these on whether it should be there or not. So first, these two big ones are video requests, uh, video prefetches. Um, unfortunately, we don't know if they were actually used because an instrumentation here is quite, quite poor, so we can't really make any judgment here. Let's look at these two next, this one and this one. These are concurrent, but they were correctly held in the queue um, throughout this span. So they are concurrent and they are not important because they haven't come on screen. There's no like red line or red dot on this on this row. But as it turns out, it, they, they actually were correctly held in the client side queue. Uh, they didn't go to the network till quite late and therefore um, they did not interfere with this particular request. Third, okay, let's look at this guy. This one was on the network and it is unnecessary because it's not on screen at this time. But then the reason this network request was made is because uh, the image actually came on screen and then the user skipped past it. And as we discussed uh, previously, it is not possible to cancel the request once it's on once it's on the wire. You can throw away the data when it comes back, but it's quite hard to get the server to not send it to you. Fourth, now this one is a GraphQL request, which means that it's downloading the data model that we use to show like the next few feed items or whatever. Um, in general, we're going to prioritize uh, the data model over media. So this one is also going to be quite hard to move. All right, finally, let's look at this one. <clears throat> Number five, this actually fits all of our criteria, it looks like. Um, it was on the network, it was downloading bytes, it wasn't on screen, and so we could have moved it. And, and it is an image prefect, so it's not video or GraphQL. As it turns out, as we investigate deeper for this particular one, this is actually a case of broken instrumentation. And this one is the same as this one. So it turns out that it did actually come on screen and it was identical to the number three case, which is quite a disappointing outcome. However, if uh, this had not come on screen, then this would have been an opportunity to improve congestion. So the conclusion for this trace is that we don't seem to have fixable congestion here, but we should look deeper into when video prefetches come on screen. Um, and for the trace overall, we can conclude also that there's an opportunity to go after prefetching in at least two different ways. It seems to be broken in at least two different ways. Um, that's it. That's the analysis uh, for this trace. Uh, thanks. Uh, this is the end of the talk. Thanks for coming. Um, the takeaways that I want to leave you with are first that visualizations can really help understand the behavior of complex systems. And second, that adding this element of visual appeal actually just makes things a lot more fun, which is 
always good to have in your job. Um, I'd like to thank especially the transient analysis team since this entire visualization effort is built on top of their tool, as well as the images infra team uh, who added a lot of the instrumentation that I was able to stitch together in order to make these visualizations. So thank you. Thank you so much, Anuko, for this awesome talk. Um, networks are super important these days. Uh, unfortunately, there is not a whole lot of information on how to make the best use of it. So it's great uh, that you have uh, shared your lessons. Uh, since we are criminally out of time, um, we are going to have only very, very little time for questions. So since I don't see any questions so far, I would love to ask you if you have any um, infrastructure pieces that basically implement the analysis of network bottlenecks and whatnot in a push-based model where you automatically detect uh, like bad behavior and notify developers about the issues before they, like, so they don't even have to investigate uh, or pose issues themselves. Yeah, so the, um, there's roughly speaking, we're trying to get to a place where developers don't have to think about this very much. And the one mistake that developers can really make is prefetching the wrong stuff. So we have uh, so we have instrumentation for that, basically in the form of prefetch efficiency. How much of the stuff you prefetch uh, actually gets used ultimately? Um, but specifically for the ordering and the are you queuing it at the right time and things like that, uh, as far as possible, it should not be something that developers worry about. Um, so there's instrumentation for us in the form of these traces and aggregates on these traces, but should not be it should not be something that's really under the control of individual product developers. Speculative execution has always been my area of fascination. I mean, there are so many things we can do. Like, I mean, caches are all about this, like. Uh, range prediction and all those things are utilizing it. So I'm uh, curious, and I think actually the latest step of Dub APIs also uh, have the prefetching uh, built in where you, on the tag, you can add a, an attribute saying that this is something that you can prefetch. Uh, so my question then would be like, so the, the, what I like about this approach is that since it's very declarative, you just need to uh, say that this resource can potentially be prefetched, and then uh, you can delegate um, the logic uh, to some sort of scheduler that can accumulate historical data and potentially make much better decisions about whether something needs or need not to be prefetched. So I wonder if you have something like that, if you're leveraging something like that as well, where you have a declarative way to say, this can potentially be prefetched, but I don't know whether it's the best way, to, like well, whether it should be. It's up to you know library to decide. Yeah, there are uh, there are a couple of ways in which in which we are approaching this. There is one API certainly for rendering that um, that the product elements team at Facebook is building out, uh, where you just declare that something is preloadable, and that includes both the data model and then eventually the media for that particular uh, piece of data. Uh, and that approach is, like you said, uh, in, you don't individually control like that this is the thing to be prefetched. It's more uh, declarative. And the plan ultimately is to have some sort of prediction for what users click on. And there's, there's a lot of potential there because you could personalize personalize it for users and things like that. Um, for a lot of data, but however, like for, for feed-like surfaces, at the same time, it, it's a little, um, it may be a little premature to go that far because for a lot of products, they have sort of a, a, a known path that they want users to go down. For feed-like surfaces, it's just like straight down. You can't really skip or navigate in different ways. Uh, even products that don't seem to have a straight path, like often do, um, have like one path which is like 90% of the uh, of the clicks. So in, in those cases, it, it's a little premature maybe to to bring that sort of prediction into it, and you just want to prefetch like what's next. Um, another similarity with branch prediction actually that uh, that is interesting to us is 
the cost of misses. So ultimately, like working on congestion is all about like reducing the cost of misses. Um, and that's something that we are really looking at the at the network layer for. That's why the client side queuing uh, is is so important because the the cost of a prefetch miss vastly increases if you put the thing on the network. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I would love to continue the discussion, but unfortunately we are out of time. So thank you so much again for participating. Amazing talk. I'm looking forward to track the progress. I still believe that um, it would be nice to decouple the uh, assumption about how exactly your resource tree is going to be surfaced. Because, for example, if you say that, oh, yeah, for feed, we know that it's going to be next, next, next. But then you essentially couple a component with the knowledge that it will have to be, like it will be uh, fetched next. Whereas if you have a just a declarative model, then you can reuse the component in multiple different types of surfaces where maybe there is no such definition as next or whatnot. But anyways, yeah, thank you so much again. Um, and I'm looking forward to hear more about your progress maybe at our one of our next events.